Good Sunday morning. It's July 26th. No, it's 28th. And I'm out in my garden. It's about 11 o'clock and it's 83 degrees, which is relatively cool for 11 o'clock in Mississippi. But uh, we've had a uh, rain, rain, a bunch of rain. In fact, I think it's rained every day for almost a week. The ground is wet. My plants are watered. But I see that the temperature is going to drop, it's going to, going to escalate again this week. It's going to get hot again. It's going to be July again. But uh, I was just thinking weather and the calendar are such an important part of understanding nature. I'm, on August 1st, which is, I think, three or four days from now, I'm going to start a study of Tuck Everlasting that's going to be open to the public. It's by looking at Lit Club, and I try to look at a different book part of every month at least. I may do the entire book Tuck Everlasting. It's such a book treasure. It's an easy read, so it's accessible to almost any any reader, say fourth grade nut probably, but maybe earlier than that now things have changed so much. But it, but it's not insulting to an adult. I love reading Tuck Everlasting. I love watching the movie Tuck Everlasting. I started preparing my notes for Tuck last Yesterday, well, a couple of days ago, and last night, I watched the movie again on on, the, on my Disney Channel. What a delightful movie that is! It's not exactly like the book, but it the essence is the same, the magic is the same, the love of nature, the splendidness of being in nature and being part of nature is the same. In a nutshell, as I look at my cage for my roses, it's about a young girl who uh, feels that she's caged in a um, Victorian home style with a fence, a jabbed fence out front, an iron fence out front, and she, she's never, but she lives right next to the, a patch of woods. And her family owns the woods. If you can do such a thing as own the woods, makes me think of the mo the movie Pocahontas and the song "Colors of the Wind." You think you own the land that you are living, where you're living. I don't know how, how exactly it goes, but we don't own nature. We are part of nature. And, and I guess in that respect, I'm, um, I told a preacher the other day, I guess I'm almost Native American in my religious beliefs because I do believe that we are part of nature. I celebrate nature. Every chance that I get in my garden is a celebration of nature. Well, Tuck Everlasting is a celebration of nature. It's a celebration of time. But it's a fantasy, not weird. It's just almost not a fantasy. In fact, some people may argue that it's not a, well, it is a fantasy. And I'm not gonna tell you why, you'll have to read it to understand. But it's so, it is so much rooted in time and in nature that it's hardly a fantasy at all. I invite you to join me on August 1st, as I begin unwrapping the book and the movie, Tuck Everlasting, because I think they're both exquisite types of literature, uh, excellent, and they're excellent productions, a little different and a lot the same.